Last Pint Productions presents the New Way Podcast. The New Way contains adult content that Disney Studios likely finds indefensible and inconsistent with the studio's values. If naughty language and poop jokes offend you, please track down a copy of a wholesome Disney film, like the not at all overtly racist picture Song of the South. Or, perhaps, introduce yourself to a new culture with the Siamese Cats and Lady in the Tramp. And, if all else fails, pop on Mulan and try and forget that Eddie Murphy became famous largely for his incredibly homophobic stand-up routine, Raw. Listener discretion is advised. Rape jokes are a hidden gem in comedy, let me explain. Hurry, hurry, let's go! Time's a wasting. Come on, Ralph! And I love the black people. We need you people, I swear, because no Jew's gonna make up a train. Where's my nose? Here it is. Here's your arm. <laughs> Honey, my... the mustache, these toddlers, they don't know how to play with us. Hey, I'll suck a cock on the Golden Gate Bridge before I bring you a mixed screen, buddy. When I eat, I don't want to taste everywhere my paws have been. Everybody wants to be naked and famous. Everybody wants to be just like me and naked. Will you help teach me about this? What is it? A new way. Hello and welcome to the New Way Podcast, brought to you by Last Pint Productions. New Way, where we disseminate, deliberate, and masturbate over movies, pop culture, TV, music. We eat a lot of uh, popcorn mm. um, really for the good. pop culture. It's very good popcorn. And huh? yeah, <laughs> thanks for not uh, you know you know distracting me during the, <laughs> oh, <laughs> the intro I'm, period. Was I not supposed to do that? <laughs> I thought you wanted to do the one thing that he asked you not to do. Yeah, yeah there we go. Uh, that's great. So, yeah, I have to make sure I test our sound effects this time and watch the monitor. Uh, as uh, last uh, time, which you, you guys will at some point hear that podcast, uh, we are, are going to do some sound replace, sound effect replacement since our soundboard was actually not uh, audible during the podcast. Anyway, welcome to The New Way. I am Matt Shank. I'm joined in studio by Ben Wilson and Nick Santa Croce. How's it going, guys? Sup, sup. Hey, buddy. Um, we have had, uh, it's been a very interesting pop culture week, um, and there's been a lot going down, and we kind of wanted to discuss that. And I, Pop I've, secret week over I've, here. <laughs> definitely a pop secret week for Nick over there. When, <laughs> if, you, if you just hear random munching um, at some point, it is, it's Nick no, I'm done. eating I, I, popcorn dinner. I just did that to comedic effect for the intro. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait till we're done. No, I know there's going to be more popcorn in here. You're going to strategically place that popcorn you don't know in. Me. I know you very well. You're already working on one of your best... <laughs> re-entry point is but um we're gonna get to some kind of you do know somewhat well. serious topics i think later on here but the first thing i want to discuss is i i don't think i've ever felt more alienated from the public than i do after watching the aquaman trailer I don't know if you guys watched the, the Comic-Con Aquaman trailer. Oh, or yeah. Not. Oh, yeah. Well, tell us more about that Aquaman trailer. So, oh, yeah. I thought it was the most ridiculous, <laughs> yeah. funny, mainstream movie trailer I've ever witnessed with my naked eyes that wasn't on the sci-fi channel. It, it, it's truly, it's truly if HBO had the budget to make... An Aquaman trailer for Entourage during during that storyline <laughs> yes. to make fun of it with an unlimited budget. That's what it was. There's legit a scene where I swear it's stuff from Shark Tale, like, <laughs> and they just superimposed Jason Momoa into it. And so I was so excited, terrible, but so excited to go and watch people eviscerate that trailer, Oof. and they love it. Everyone mm. fucking loves. The Aquaman trailer. It's, it's like going to r slash the Donald on and Reddit. They, and they watched they watched the Shazam trailer like DC finally on track. And I'm like, <laughs> what world? And look, I'm rooting for Shazam because I like Zachary Levi. I don't know if that movie's gonna be good. It's a weird trailer, but Aquaman is un, un, unobjectively terrible. Terrible, right? Am yes. I alone? Well, so uh, I don't, I think that you're right. Ultimately. Um, at the beginning of the Aquaman trailer, like where you know the light keeper comes across uh, across the queen or whatever, and the, everything's there, and then he's a kid and like gets into a fight at the beginning, and then you know he's at an aquarium, so of course the you know shark tries to attack. Uh, I was Look like, at that nerd Arthur, he's talking to I the thought fish. that was kind of cool, and then it goes to that shot where they're all just like staring, <laughs> and it's the worst CG. It's like it's like. I mean, I still think that the CG 20 years ago in Starship Troopers is better than some of the CG it, in this that. This is worse than Deep Blue Sea CGI. 
Uh, which is pretty bad. Which is pretty bad. Uh, but yeah, so... The, also, do you I, guys ever wonder why it's not just Water Man? Why is it Aqua Man? Because Water Man doesn't sound cool. Because Water Man they were saving for is, Mega Man. Is Arthur Curry Spanish? Or like, was there a... a no, that's Agua Man. That's Agua. Agua, Agua, Agua is Aquaman. 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 Right, right, right. right. <laughs> You're fucking racist. <laughs> I'm ignorant, not racist. They're two different things. <laughs> Agua Man. <laughs> yeah, see, I'm Agua Man. <laughs> but you, it still makes my point. Which I am, I why am, is it that? I am very thirsty. Agua Man <laughs> would be <God>. Water Man. <laughs> It would be agua hombre in that in that case. But. I'm just like, why why the flare there? What why why the decision years ago? I, for, it was a it was a terrible. You know what sounds way better than boring general, water but... man? Aquaman. That sounds better. It does yeah. sound better. I like Aquaman. Sounds kind of more aqua, intimidating. Aquamarine, you know. It, it's more He's of... aquatic. He's an aquatic man. The life aquatic man? Come on now. And anyway, it rolls off the tongue better than the Water Man. <laughs> Look, the, 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 so. the movie—it's one of those movies that has a lot against it. I think in general because it is Aquaman. He's he's inherently kind of a silly character. So I I thought maybe I mean I like Jason Momoa. I think he brings a shit ton of charisma to it. He looks badass, so he could have reinvented it. And then you look at this movie they built around him, and it's it looks it's every cheesy awful. Stupid it's thing Thor. about Aquaman. It's Thor all over again. It's just, it's, but, it's, I, but Thor was good <laughs> and had a and had better sets and better everything. It's the same plot. Oh I mean, yeah, I mean the plot. I guess yeah. He's fighting against Patrick Wilson. Is his Loki? His brother coming to claim the the hidden kingdom. Yeah. I mean, it, it, I, I, I know <laughs> no, that's just no the actor that Patrick have, Wilson. Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> that may have been what it I always should have been Aquaman. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> which would make a far more compelling Aquaman than what I think what that trailer indicates that movie is going to be. Hey, I'm I'm not going to pass judgment on the movie until it comes out. I am. Uh, it's going to be terrible. <laughs> he was terrible in Justice <clears throat> League. I don't think he was terrible. Uh, he Justice was. League. He was. He was totally corny. He, I, I thought that the two I things I was going to like about Justice League, character wise, was I was going to love Barry Allen and I was going to love his spin on Arthur Curry. And honestly, I I, I thought Affleck's Batman and, and obviously Gal Gadot's uh, Wonder Woman were the best. Though none of the jokes, none of the jokes landed. They were trying way too hard. We, we got, we, They're caricatures of them. It's it's not reinventing. It's, we've it's we've like, done Justice League. I, 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 yeah. Well, here here's all I'll say it's about too much. I'll, trying too hard. All I'll say about Momoa is that he did have his own kind of take, which is that you know Aquaman's kind of a bro. Yeah. And I kind of like that because I've never really seen that except in sort of where it's being made fun of like in a comic book movie you know where yeah. he's, he's kind of, Flash yeah, what, Thompson what we yeah. need is more bro superheroes <laughs> finally that that demographic is represented I, I, look I'm I'll, I'll over the over the comic version of Aquaman which is this blonde haired whiny w- like wimpy dude I'll take the uh, biker version the, the sons of anarchy Aquaman much more over that but yeah, it's I don't either think, way he's in a the, shit movie J- Justice League is not I mean the faults of that movie don't fall to Jason Momoa in his portrayal of Aquaman. That movie is just, it's not a good movie to so, begin with. Some of and Aquaman will probably that, not be a good, a good movie, but I don't think it's Jason Momoa. Some fault. of the most, no. some of the moments that most took me out of Justice League, and that's saying a lot, were due to one of his lines. So I actually do say he... One of his poorly written lines. <laughs> well, listen, Ezra didn't do much better with the poorly written lines, but they were bad. They weren't funny. And those characters well, suck. Well, e- either way, uh, I I urge you to go watch uh, the Aquaman trailer. My brother and I laughed mm. like until like I literally couldn't Aquaman. like move my face. <laughs> Aquaman, El Hombre del Agua. Uh, from from the I urge you to watch it. It is for ladies who are very thirsty. And <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I did. Lo- I mean, the other trailers that came out, Ben. I know you were really hot on Godzilla. Uh, well, no, which... I, I, so I was not really super hot on the trailer overall. Mm. I just thought it was. It was fun to see. Well, first off, they didn't show a whole lot, sure, which is good. Uh, and I think that a lot of people got pissed off at that trailer just because it didn't show a whole lot. Uh, everyone was just like, "Oh, this looks stupid." It's just a bunch of nice looking images and monsters and stuff like that, but you don't get any real sense of what the plot is. Like, I think that's kind of the fucking point. I sort of got an idea of the plot that there, there's some sort of apocalypse, and the only way to fix it is to have Godzilla take care of all of these other monsters that are 
un- being they're attacking the Earth and they're going to unfreeze. Whatever. Absolutely not the tr- the plot oh, really? of the movie whatsoever. No. Oh, really? No, they're fighting Godzilla. No, 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 no. Godzilla, Mothra, Rodan, all fighting King Ghidorah. Okay. Well, that's so the same thing. There's something attacking, and they've got to get the old gods to get rid of the new god. Listen, I'm I'm a Mothra man. I've always gone, always gone on record. Full Mothra. Give me, give me that solo Mothra movie. That's what I want. Give it to me. We, if this movie is successful, you may just get that. You never <laughs> yeah. Know. I, 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 you I, just I, want, you just want miniature singing twins. You know it, baby. <laughs> oh lord. They summoned that moth. Mothra. <laughs> Um, I I, 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 the, I warm to it more. I watch it. I think it's an effective uh, piece. It, it's it, like a imag- teaser. It's the a imagery teaser. is very pretty. It, it, I think that was where I was a little confused. It seemed like a disconnect in, in tone a little bit. But if he's going, for, then I didn't know. I didn't know it was Doherty, which made more sense. That it, or, do, do, uh, yeah, Michael yeah, Doherty. Doherty. Um, that more. It's more fairy tale ish. The kind of a more fairy tale ish take on it, which I, I dig. But I have to say, the winner for me, which surprised the hell out of me. Was that Fantastic Beast trailer just well, I haven't, floored me? I didn't watch it yet. It looks cool. It is like it is one of the best cut and jam packed trailers I've seen in a long time. Like it, it's firing. It is. You can tell the studio is super excited about it, and they threw a lot of money at it. Well, the only thing <clears> that <throat> bugged me a little bit about that trailer is it spelled out a little too much. Sure, which is that that's my big beef with a lot of modern trailers it's basically like what's the point of seeing the movie now sure now i know that that's going to be a long ish movie Mm -hmm. with a lot of stuff that doesn't show up and it's going to be completely out of order but but when it when a when a trailer feels like i'm just like i know the entire plot of the movie already yeah that always it it, it, no i get it it is a i mean it is it is a pack to the gills trailer my my only holdout on that is that that trailer is all Jude Law and Johnny Depp, and not a lot of the main character in the series of Eddie Redmayne. So I think it's another one of those things that we're not seeing. What's actually going a lot on. of what's going on yeah. with his character? We're getting everyone else's reactions and, and talking about him and stuff. We don't really know exactly what it is. But um, is I, I ever heard in that movie? Well, she's in Aquaman. Oh, right. <laughs> one of my favorite parts of that, though, was the very beginning was, uh, when, when they have the... Uh, uh, the young Newt? Well, well, well the young Newt, uh, Scamander, and, and they have the... What's it called in the in the chest? The um, Oh, the uh, Boggart. But, yeah, but Boggart. And the Boggart turns into a desk... <laughs> And he says, he's like, oh, because, you know, it's always turning into like a spider or like a, you know, whatever. Whatever they fear the most. Whatever they fear the most. It just turns into a desk and he's just like, oh, yeah, that's what Newt Scamander feels the most is working working at a desk. <laughs> working at an office working desk. Working at an office desk for the rest of his life. And that, I thought that that was, that's a really awesome lead in yeah. for that. And I think that it, it says a lot about that character. But yeah, so I, I thought it was a great trailer. I, think, I mean, I just it, thought it, was it really little... looks like they're, they're setting up something pretty special, I think, with this, which is really surprising. And for me, as a Potter well, fan... I, I really loved the... I did. The first I, I, one I like surprised the hell out of me. And what I like is that the only thing that ever bugged me with the original movies, which I do, I, I absolutely adore... Is there was no budget behind them. Even even when they got to like the last movie, they still didn't have confidence enough to throw money to realize those things. The way that Lord of the Rings, even though Lord of the Rings was on a shoestring budget, they were using the, the effects are so much better in the Lord of the Rings movies. It, it, happening almost a decade before that last Potter movie, it was always upsetting to me that, that I, like there was no. Con- I, I don't know if the, where the lack of confidence was, or if it was just because they. Got such a big cast, or whatever. But they're like they're now they're putting budget behind this, and it looks good. Well, I'm I'm just glad that they were finally they were able to look past these domestic assault allegations and give an actor <laughs> like Johnny Depp, a, a small time actor, finally a chance to shine this in a big true. role. This uh, is true. I uh, don't think that <laughs> segs into what we're going to talk about at all. Anyway, no, it, or it's... does it? <laughs> A little bit. Um, we're gonna we're gonna do a quick quick uh, segue over to to something else here, and then we'll get to our our topic at hand. But um, one of the things that's been airing the last couple of weekends is there is a new Sasha Baron Cohen um, series on <clears throat> that was done completely as everything he does. You find out about it when it comes out. Like that's how quick it has to happen because once it's out, that's when everyone starts losing their shit. Whoever got caught, you know, on the show. Saying stupid, ridiculous things, <laughs> and of course now you know that in the climate that we're in right now, it's a it's ripe for for a thing. He has to use a lot more prosthetics now because mm-hmm. he's a recognizable entity. Some of them better than other ones. Some of them a little bit uncanny valley, bizarre looking. Um, but 
it is kind of terrifying to listen to how easily he's getting, even in this day and age where people know they're being recorded and they're being scripted and, and this stuff, things that they can get away to say. And, and this is going to lead directly into our topic, but I just thought I'd play a couple of, of the, the bigger clips um, they did from here. One one episode he does is all about gun control for schools, and he's playing this like ex Mossad agent who's not not an ex Mossad agent, uh, as he's he's pretending to not be, um, oh, no. and he's getting a bunch of <coughs> I got it, Colonel. Uh, oh no, I'm gonna put Nick on uh, mute there. Hey, look, it's like he's not even here. It's uh, perfect. Yeah, drink that beer. That'll uh, <laughs> that'll that'll work. Feels okay, now like you're better. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but I'm I'm kind of amazed at these and and what's also amazing with his stuff is he gets he has stuff with left of the aisle people as well. Right. He has Bernie Sanders and Bernie Sanders is like I don't know what the hell you're talking about. You're an idiot. And he gets Dan Rather on. And Dan Rather's like I don't know what you're talking about. You're an idiot. I'm leaving. And then he gets these other guys who are lawmakers, legitimate lawmakers in our country, to let's say talk about arming children like kindergartners with guns in schools to help stop school shootings so they uh they say this i support the kindergartens program we in america would be wise to implement it too in less than a month less than a month a first grader can become a first grenader a three-year-old cannot defend itself from a assault rifle by throwing a hello kitty pencil case at it our founding fathers did not put an age limit on the Second Amendment. Maybe having the young people trained and understand how to defend themselves in their school might actually make us safer here. The, those are two of those guys are congressmen. Jesus Christ! Like actual congressmen. Now this one, my now the one that got a lot of play this week, which I, I'm surprised Nick you hadn't you hadn't seen any of this is a. I've been waiting a, to watch it with you, buddy. Sta a state representative from Georgia. I don't know if you've see, uh, the, seen any of this clip, Ben, but he has been a... He's the guy that wanted to impose the burqa ban and really, like, get people... Oh, it's, what's his, it's that fucking asshole. Who, well, uh, he's resigning now as, sounds, after sounds this Sounds like clip. a great guy. Well, so... So, Sasha Baron Cohen's character is this, like you say, is this... Even, this I have to say, <clears> even Republicans aren't happy yeah, with no, this no. guy. Well, they, that's they why he's... Him. I mean, he, well, this was an easy something. way to get rid of him, uh, was this. But basically, the the premise is that uh, Sasha Baron Cohen's coming at them as this, this Israeli agent. Uh, the guy, and he's going to help them arm themselves against terrorists. So he tells this guy, you need to distract them, and this is how this plays out. This is, by the way, this is just un, this is unreal to me, and I'm going to laugh at this because it, it's harder to actually take this truth, because this is really awful. Like, if you actually think about this, but yeah. How do you attract attention? Ready to start screaming? Take your clothes off? In America, there is one forbidden word. It is the N-word. Now, I am going to be the terrorist. You have three seconds to attract attention. Go! Nigger! 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 Are you crazy? The N-word is noony. Not this word. This word is disgusting. And, and that is, a, and this guy, by the way, also gets half naked to push his ass against the Israeli guy to that because that that'll make him gay and that's another like, tactic and this guy legitimately goes well I've, I've had threats against me and i yes i believed him and i did some things in in the heat of the moment to that would do to protect my family i'm like F this ain't the carbonaro effect all yeah, right yeah yeah like this is this is un it's unreal to me and this guy, it's very real this to me. guy it's... at least has a re has repercussions for this, and then I'm, he's being forced hey, out. I'm but... I'm surprised that that for that is what made him resign. I mean, I mean, <laughs> at this point, isn't it more surprising that someone would resign after doing something horrible? By the way, I guarantee it wasn't the N word. It was the fact that he shoved his naked ass against this other dude, and he shows his ass on there. I guarantee to the Republicans that's a worse. Well, on, on worst in, thing on Instagram, you're allowed to show your ass. You know that, right? Well, they're allowed to show it on Showtime too, so they don't they don't blur nothing out. <laughs> it's just it's just nipples you can't have in America. That's right, that's right. So there are no nipples in America. <laughs> I, I I urge you guys to watch that uh, show as well. It is uh, it is funny, but it is terrifying at the same time, and it is a good lead in to yeah. I don't I don't think I'll be watching that as a comedy, but I'm very interested to watch it. I I still have to watch it as both a little bit. I mean, I I especially I mean. His his end of that where he's like no it's that's not the word that that word is a terrible word it is also just so like dude like it's so in the moment of him even in character me like what is 
what is wrong with you? Like, are you <laughs> are you an insane person? Yeah. Uh, answer which is yes. Is, yes. So this brings us to the topic uh, at uh. hand, which is, I think, probably the most controversial, uh, next to maybe the Roseanne thing that, that happened. I think it's a direct response to what happened to Roseanne. But Did you issue, hear what Roseanne said about it? Oh, yeah. I've got I've, I've pulled up a lot of history on this one, because there were some things that surprised me that I, weren't, I wasn't aware were a part of this. But we're going to talk about James Gunn. James Gunn is the director of... We're not just going to talk about James no, Gunn. No, 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 no. But, but, but it, this is the... This is the impetus. The, yeah, this is the, the impetus conversation. for it. Um, this is kind of the new the newsish portion of this because I just want I want to go through and, and get some of these talking points here um, for us to then just debate and discuss. James Gunn, director of Guardians of the Galaxy um, parts one and two, beloved by Disney, producer of the largest grossing Marvel movie to history. I mean, was a producer on uh, uh, Infinity War, working on the third movie, just turned in a draft, um, but has a history of being an edgy. Human being in general is really what, the way I say it. Um, he had tweets 10 years ago, right around the time he divorced Jenna Fisher, and he made Super, which I don't know if any of you guys have seen Super or not, yes. but it is a dark... It's very he dark was movie. married to Jenna Fisher? Oh, yeah, and he went through a tumultuous divorce with her, and they made Super, which is the most... One, it, it is a dark movie that's clearly coming from a dark place. Like, it's funny, but it's there's something dark, weird about it. It's it's not it's a pretty mean spirited movie. Yes, yes, exactly. I've not seen it. Um, and I, I mean, I like it's, the movie, it, it, it's but a, it's an interesting movie, and and it, it sort of. I remember it ran very counter to like Kick Ass, which is mm. it, it, it gets compared to a lot because they they have similar themes, but Kick Ass was kind of gleefully like even though it was ultra violent, it was kind of like gleeful and sort of kind of laissez faire in the way that presented violence where super was just like, Oh no, like I'm going to come in and hit someone with a wrench and it's like, and it's going to be bad. It's not funny. It's not funny. It's going to be bad. Um, yeah. but it was, and this all was happening around the same sort time. Sort of like his tweets that are in question. Yeah. Right? And so, and so coming at us, like I kind of made the, the timeline of this, right? So James Gunn. So, 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 so set it up. Yeah. So James Gunn, um, he's no longer at the helm. Because of these tweets. Well, hold on. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go through, because there's a, there's a couple of things in here I think they are interesting to go through. So James Gunn says he tweets, I'm going to read, I'll read you one. I like when little boys touch me in my silly place. All right. Um, another one, the best thing about being raped is when you're done being raped. And it's like, whoo, this feels great, not being raped. These are not terrible. They're, they're not great jokes. They're not particularly funny. They're not the worst thing I've, I've heard as far as a comedian goes. And he is a writer. And I think that's there where... There were more, though. There, oh, there were... I mean, there are more. There's others that made satirical comments about 9-11, AIDS, Holocaust, the, the monkey masturbating uh, next I, to the, I, the I kid. I mean, I, I will say right now, I feel like those tweets are still kind of indefensible for somebody, any, any sort of public figure, any sort of public eye. That's I, my personal opinion. Well, and I, I guess the, the question... With his, with his platform. We're, and I, I, wanna, I do well, want to debate I think, that. I, so. think, I, think we, I think that everyone in this room, we're going to have differing opinions yeah. here on the nuance, but I think that... Everyone here in this room can agree on two things. We're all big fans of James Gunn's work, sure. and all of these tweets in question are pretty abhorrent. Can we, yeah. we agree on those two things? There you go. Yeah. Okay, so, so we'll, we'll be differences, but those t those two factors play into this. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Um. So J so then James Gunn makes Super with this really dark kind of thing, and then he gets the Guardians franchise, right? And he becomes beloved, and he uses social media to openly converse with his fans. And then he starts to use social media to openly converse about the state of politics, and specifically his his disregard for what's happening with the president. Dislike and, her. And, her and, and dislike disregard. with Trump and the conservative right. Then he gets embroiled. This is the part I didn't know. Do you know about the Mark Duplass, Ben Shapiro yes. scandal? Okay, so I did not Absolutely. know about that. So Mark Duplass is another filmmaker and actor uh, who I'm a, a big fan of, and I did not know is fairly conservative. Um, he's not an, fairly conservative. He's actually quite liberal. He just he's, he's, a, he's a moderate. He, he wants he, the people. So the yeah, he wants people to listen to people on both sides of the aisle. And he did say that he was like, if you want to listen to a, a reasonable conservative voice, then you should maybe follow Ben Shapiro and listen to some of the stuff that Ben Shapiro has to say. Yeah, which was problematic though, uh, in that Ben Shapiro has said some very terrible, very terrible things in the past, homophobic and racist and yes, things about absolutely. rape and all this stuff. So James Gunn got involved. And what's funny is I actually read James Gunn saying James Gunn was one of the few celebrities defending Mark Duplass, right? But his name got 
there. The name the name was out at that point, and it was involved, and that's where he got on uh, what's his name, Michael Cernovich's radar. radar yeah. Right. So Michael Cernovich is essentially mm-hmm. the the deep throat that took down all of this. Cernovich is a right wing <laughs> uh, scumbag, and I say that with <laughs> in meaning that he literally talks about how women can't be raped. It's physically impossible because they're just always asking for. It. I mean, he has these. He has the most yep. extreme. Views on rape and disgusting things I've ever read him up. Far He's more far more disgusting than anything I hear out of James Gunn. But now he knows that James Gunn is doing these things, so he he puts all of these old tweets on blast. Troll warfare. <laughs> yeah, on on like Friday night or whenever it was. It happened very quick. Um puts the tweets out. By morning, James Gunn has come back and he's so James Gunn has his first at this point, James Gunn I think thinks that it's gonna blow over there's that and i it's interesting how all of these have the same kind of thing where the guys first come out to be like hey sorry kind of contrite whatever and then shit goes down and they have to official like the official apology but here's what he said this is kind of interesting for us to as we debate the merit not the merit of these tweets but what's going on he says number one many people have followed my career when i started i viewed myself as a provocateur making movies and telling jokes that were outrageous and taboo as i've discussed publicly many times as i've developed as a person so is my work and humor two it's not to say i'm better but i'm very very different than i was a few years ago today i try to root my work and love and connection and less in anger my days saying something just because it's shocking and trying to get a reaction are over uh, for the record, when I made these shocking jokes, I wasn't living them out. I know this is a weird statement to make and seems obvious, but still, here I am saying it. And anyway, that is a complete honest truth. I used to make a lot of offensive jokes. I don't anymore. I don't blame my past self for this, but I like myself more and feel more like a full human being creator today. Love you all. Now, did that happen before he, Disney yes. lets him go? So then, then Disney releases a statement <laughs> directly following those things. The offensive attitudes and statements discovered on James's Twitter feed are indefensible and inconsistent with our studio's values. We have severed our business relationship with him. That was it. That's Thanos snap done. There, like that. That's it. James Gunn has been shut down and quickly. Uh, as Disney, the biggest uh, company in the world, we have decided to uh, occasionally vet uh, the people that we hand <laughs> giant branches over to. We discovered these tweets, even though they've been there the whole time. <laughs> yes. And uh, we knew he's with trauma. We well, knew he was directing okay, softcore so off, porn. Let, let, or whatever. Let, before we even get into the discussion, yeah. we can he- sit here. What you're just joking about, and we can all agree, Disney does not work on any sort of moral sort of high ground. They are a PR machine. If something looks bad, then it's they a, have it's to a, make a, a knee jerk reaction. And a, that's my problem. The root of it. Not, not that I. God damn it! There go the guardians. <laughs> well, that's a just, metaphor. I was just, I was just moving my shirt, like literally getting my shirt out of my fucking arm. Just destroyed and, the Guardians of the Galaxy for the second time this at week. The shelf of the pop figures. That's an analogy for the whole, yeah. uh, the whole state well, of affairs. Well, they're all dead. Well, okay. So Ben, I've been thinking about this a lot, uh, a lot, and I think that I, I, I is this your hot a, take? Huh? Is this your hot take? I don't. I think it's, it's lukewarm. Probably it's not particularly tweet, tweet hot. Tweet out that hot take. Come on, and do it. Give it out. Nice, there. nice one. Come on. Uh, I think I texted you guys the link because you hadn't heard that he'd been fired no, until I, I texted you, right? And Ben's Ben's first text back. Um, I, I, I forgot what it was, but it was to, it was to the tune of you know we can't we can't hope that um, just because someone that we're fans of or sure. that we agree with politically, if we don't hold them accountable, we can't hold anybody accountable. Yeah. And yeah. I really took that to heart. I started thinking about that a lot. And, I, and then I started to try to put myself in Disney shoes. And like, you're right. We're, we're kind of reactionary while we still made Song of the South when we were a different company. And we, we, we did the Siamese Cat yeah. uh, series in, in Lady and the Tramp. We're not that company anymore, and we have a responsibility because we're a kid's company. And that, and that's fine. And I believe that, it, you know, when you talk about the whole the whole, the gay cake controversy, I, I, I've talked to you about, I've yeah. talked with Matt about this, and I, I actually am really on your side now. I believe that if you are a business owner and you, and you pull yourself up by the bootstraps and you, for some misguided, terrible, homophobic reason, don't want to sell your cakes to gay people, that is your right. Yeah. And as a gay person, I wouldn't want to... Uh, yeah, I don't wouldn't give want them to your get them business anyway, right? And then that's free market, baby. And either a bunch of Nazis keep your biz- your business, sure. you know, going, or it runs you into the ground, and that's your risk that you that's take. The thing. It has to go both ways. Well, it's sort so, of and, like, and so if you feel like you're taking, uh, just not to interrupt your point, but if you feel like you're taking the moral high ground there, 
history is going to prove those people wrong, no matter what. Sure. You know, in, in retrospect, we're going to say, hopefully, those were those were judgmental people and blah blah blah. But yes, it's a free country, and you can do. You have the right to refuse service to somebody if you really want to. And 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 to that to that end, I. While I and I've thought about this a lot, while I believe that I, I think that Disney acted in a knee jerk, reactionary way, um, and, and and while I think that I'm starting to lean towards the the opinion that they should not have have let him go, um, I do think that it is absolutely their right to fire someone based off of tweets that you you did. It doesn't matter how long ago it it was. Now, I've read a great article where. This firing basically negates the message of Guardians of the Galaxy. Here you have a, a ragtag <laughs> yeah. group of criminals and assassins and people try, trying to... They were assholes. And they, they come together and they grow and they become better people. And to say to say that, you know, James uh, is just the same person that tweeted those those tweets 11 years ago, I, I, I think is, is naive at best. And it, it's... it's um, <laughs> And, and, and here, and here's where I where I stand here. Disney, it's it's in their right to fire someone, but the, the truth is, those tweets were always there. It, they knew his. I remember when they when they hired him, the video of him with trauma started making the rounds. Well, that and, and that they knew. They well, knew. that blog post he had about the sex life of, of yes. superheroes. It was all just basically yes. about like how fuckable certain female superheroes are. They, so for, they knew. For, but hold on one second. They, okay. they, they, they knew, right? So. So I, what I was going to say is very pertinent to the conversation, though, because he already apologized for these tweets back in 2013. He apologized, publicly apologized for his humor and didn't delete the tweets. And didn't delete yeah. the tweets. Yeah. You he, know? he apologized because they were brought up. Yeah. And, and, and look, <clears throat> you know, remember in college, Ben, we would be partying pretty hard and then someone would do something embarrassingly drunk. And someone would get a photo of them or something, and then the line would always be, "Well, guess you can't run for public office now." Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, the, the climate has changed now. The politicians yeah. can get away. Well, the only people that can get away with anything. Here we have Roy Moore, an actual credible evidence that he that he that he preyed on underage women. But a, a hypothetical uh, tweet was enough to to get James Gunn fired, right? But at, at at the root of it, the biggest problem is this. While I think that Disney is in their right. They knew that it was there. They, if that was a problem, they should have vetted him. They should have never hired him in the first place. But they, they knew who he was. They hired him anyway. And now it's a problem. For me, for me the bigger problem is not that someone got, got fired from a franchise that we all love. We all love James' work. And we all want him to stay on Guardians. But at the same time, everyone in this room wants everyone to be held accountable. This unfairly gets grouped in the Me Too movement. And I don't think that it belongs there. No, it absolutely doesn't. Me, me too is an important... And, and the thing is, what I struggle with is, I try to think, you know, when you go with Al Franken, right? I like Al mm -hmm. Franken. But you know what? If that was true, he, he, yes, he should step down. He should not not have any sway if, if, he, if he was jokingly assaulting people on, on a plane, yeah. right? But so it doesn't matter. You can't play favorites. If you want the Me Too movement to, to work and you want things to get better for everyone, you have to hold everyone accountable. They're going to be casualties. Right? There are, I mean, the, right. and, and, and it's fair for there to be casualties on the side. It's that fair. We, it's our side, too, because it's sort of, that's how the, it, that's how the change happens. And There's that's what be I thought. Martyrs. That's what I thought when Ben sent, sent that text, you know, we, we, we can't, we can't play favorites. And it's true. But, but the, the thing that's scary to me is, 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 is this, <laughs> this guy, Cernovich, right? Yep. Alt-right scum, scumbag. We are now Disney. All they had to do was say, look, look. We knew about these tweets. We knew about James Gunn. We knew when we hired him, um, but we knew that he had an exciting new voice and he br he breathed life into in, into this franchise. And there's a big reason why it was so popular. And we, we you know, while we, while while we strongly disagree with uh, with all these horrible tweets, what we've what we've done is we've talked with James, and he's going to donate a million dollars to to uh, you know a pertinent charity. And and he's going to grow from this experience. That's, that's, so he's going to right wing it. He's, that that's so the, that's the Marvel response. It's not the Disney response. Right, but 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 see, that's that's what I would have liked. I would like for him to have n not get off scot free. Don't donate a, a shit ton of money to a charity. You, like he already publicly apologized. The the thing that's scary to me is that Disney by doing this so fast like that, like a Thanos snap, 
they acted so fast without thinking things through. They're giving a big thumbs up to the alt right. Tell them that they can pull up all these tweets from other comedians and other people who are critical of Trump sure. and get them fired for for jokes that were made in poor taste 11 years ago. And that is a uh, that that far transcends slippery slope. That that that, that is that is that is giving them a big thumbs up to attack people who made their career on being comedians. You know, Howard Stern made his career as a comedian up for by pushing sure. the envelope, and that's the route that James Gunn took. You know, when I was in L.A., I thought there was one route to become a writer. And now, in retrospect, I realize there are many different... You don't have to play the game or you can play the game. There are many different routes. James, I feel like he thought... The way that I relate to is I, I feel like he really thought that his best in was was as a provocateur. Sure. Maybe he didn't give himself enough credit. Maybe he thought that he needed to be shocking to make a career that's what he as says. a comedian and a, and a filmmaker, and that's what he leaned on, and, and he regrets it, right? And, and to, to, to be me, fair, it's so different he, than when acting When he had made on, these tweets, though, he, had, he was already... He had already directed a major motion picture. I mean, like, it's not like he was just some sort of, like, Joe Schmo on the street. And he'd written two Scooby-Doo movies and Dawn of the Dead. Yes, exactly. Like, we're not talking about somebody who is just, like, not in the industry and not working at all. So, Ben, James I wanted to be a star. He wanted to be an A-lister, ben, man. Ben, I have, a, I have a question for you. So, so, at what point do you separate a comedian from a writer from a tweet from a stage performance well, so 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 it's it's a great that i think that's a really and that's that's that is the question that's the argument right here because sarah silverman in wreck it ralph has said every time and so if every time an angel dies someone gets full blown aids um Patton Oswald has she, she had a three part harmony coming out of her vagina. Patton so he, Oswald has talked about um uh basically special needs people and having their parade. It, it, there are and Robert Downey Jr. I mean, I'm waiting for so, the Robert Downey Jr. moment to happen. So I, I, I but think, he's not critical of Trump on social media, so who cares, right? But so I, I don't well, Pat, we'll, Pat, we'll get to that Pat in a and second. Sarah are, but it, we'll, exactly. We'll, we'll 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 get to that in just a minute though. Um, I, I think what we're talking about here is a microcosm of that entire thing because you're talking about somebody who is employed by Disney. One, like I said, the PR machine. Disney cannot look culpable or bad in these types of situations. It's literally the worst company to work for to try and endure a PR nightmare because they will <laughs> sever they, they will sever ties with you. Now, the thing is, is if Disney ever hired Patton Oswalt, they did. Ratatouille. Exactly. <laughs> They're not going to go back on the fact that. Uh, here's the thing. That first off, that's that's ancient history. Now at sure. this point, you know that that's that's years ago. It's Until not Ratatouille something... Two, Electric Boogaloo. All oh, right, exactly. It's not something that's current. It's not something that's modern <laughs> or whatever. It. Ratatouille Two sounds really rolls off the. But, rolls but, off. but all I'm saying is that Pat Oswalt is a comedian. Uh, Sarah Silverman's a comedian. I don't consider and never have considered James Gunn a comedian. I considered him somebody who's a director and a writer and somebody who's relatively prominent out there. And so, so, so if you if you classify someone as predominantly yeah. a comedian, they can say fucked up tweets. But if you're a filmmaker, you can't have fucked well, up. Well, so tweets. here's like I said, you're in the let, entertainment industry. Who cares? Let, 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 they don't let, even let, drug let, test. Let, no, let, no, let, no. Let, so, so, so first give off, him a little time. Yeah, first off, you aren't you aren't really. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. Stand-up comedy is an art form that is predicated on the fact of being uncensored. It, it, you are supposed to be able to touch on sensitive topics and that type of thing. Being a film director and then coming up and say, you know, I like it when little boys touch me in my happy, you know, my happy place or whatever. Silly the, place. The, 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 silly place. There yeah. you go. Not happy place. Silly place. Silly place. It makes it better. <laughs> He's like, it's my hair. <laughs> 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 well, great, Ben. Now you can't get hired by Disney either. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> um, it's a very different, and, and I. And here's the thing: I understand it's a fine line that you're walking about saying, "Well, he's trying to be funny. He's, he's a writer, and he's trying to be a provocateur." Which I understand. I, I understand the fact, and I don't think. Here's the thing: I there is a you have the right to express your opinion. You also have the right for everybody else to judge you based on sure. the expen, uh, opinion that you express. So. I don't necessarily feel bad for James Gunn because he 
I, I mean, I don't feel like anybody in their right fucking mind would tweet shit like that, knowing that they already tweets. had an audience. I hate, I, knowing I hate, that they I had an audience. Tweets. I hate well, those tweets. Okay, so here's they're a, here, terrible. Here's an, here's another here's another question on. In that same, you, by the way, have you gone through Patton Oswalt's tweet? Did he ever say, "I like it when little boys touch me in my happy place"? Because I, I, I guarantee <laughs> you, he's not fucking written I, that. I have not gone ever. through. I've not gone through every Patton Oswalt tweet, but, but someone I'm, is now. But I, exactly, Michael right? And they're gonna find what they're gonna find. Michael Ian black too but hold on hold on but ben, hold on. ben said that if you're in the public eye in any in any position you shouldn't write that unless you're a comedian or ever where do you draw the line well so i uh, i draw the line t t first off contextually because if that that's just a tweet coming out of nowhere i think that that has no place uh, there is no reason why is somebody who is involved in popular that's a fair media point. who would want to put that now if you want to contextualize that in a joke if you are Following that up, based off of something with context, then maybe something. Well, we, and by the way, the, but, but, by the way, we but don't just just, just tweeting. We, see, and that's the thing. We don't know any of the context over what because he's deleted all of them. Well, yeah. What did his tweets look like at that time? Was he just tweeting like Jack Handy thoughts of the day and things like that, and trying to put line, that? Now, I have a, a, exactly. A, a, so context, question, context means a lot. Well, yeah. No and, and one a, should just randomly tweet unhinged thoughts. At all hours of the day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> you know, yeah, that's... <laughs> Touche. <laughs> um, no, so I think what's interesting to me also, is I, I, I keep I keep coming back to a lot of things in here, and I think you're right. I think it, when it's the person, if that person is not in a, in a forum or a medium where it is distanced from who they are, um, and it's not a character, and it's not a, a role, because, I mean, we can talk about moments in movies that are fucked up, that that uh, the directors and writers have put in. I mean, we talk about happiness. Yeah, so, so, so Nick, I mean, if we look he, at the movie. He, he, if we look at the movie's happiness by Todd Solon. <laughs> yeah. And now Todd Solon's ain't getting hired by Disney. But that's art. But, that's but, art. But that's a movie with some real. So there's your question. Weird pedophile things in it. So so, what what in the case of it being a stand-up comedian, we consider it art. In the case of a joke, or or at the expense of some sort of joke. Meanwhile, you have somebody who is not necessary. I mean, if if especially if there was no context with something like a like a tweet like that, I don't consider that art. I mean, I, I well, you might still me, call that subjective. To, to me, to me, still... to me, if if those James Gunn's tweets came from a teacher, or a principal, or a lawmaker, or say the president of the United States of America, that would be a huge problem for me. Um, but. When you say context means everything, you have to believe it. And if you're in entertainment and in that in that cesspool, it, it's it's very much you, you're trying to stand out no matter well, how many movies you direct. Between, uh, what's the difference between forget forget about even directing? Right, no one's going say, down the five dollar well, hoard. Hold on, it friend. was forget. wrong. Those tweets were wrong. They should never have but, happened. But, but for, like, let, let's take away from let's not let's not call him a filmmaker. Let's call him a writer, which predominantly he was at that point. He, right. had, he had directed one movie, but he had written several. So he's a writer. He has written things both comedic and not comedic. So can you argue that he is a com he's a comedic writer? Yeah. Is it okay if he was writing yeah. for if he was writing for a sitcom? Could he get away with these things or not? That, that I, I'm 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 pressing you a little bit on this because I, I ultimately agree with both of you guys that they, they look the decision had to be made how it had to be made. But I think it is a I, super slippery slope to put things that are clearly I, I agree with them. clearly <sighs> jokes. So 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 here's what, what the whole thing. I mean, ultimately it comes down just to, to your moral compass and understanding I have tr tr trying to be a better trying to raise yourself above the situation and understand, okay, what morally did this mean at this time to this person? I don't, when when Sarah Silverman rape, uh, like jokes about rape, I don't think she's actually thinking about rape or joking about rape or making fun of a victim of rape or anything along those lines. And I don't think, I absolutely don't think that that's what you know, no, they're saying he, he things for, doing, to get a rise out of people, to, get to make a it rise effect, out of to people, be provocative. But, to, to be provocative. But when your career has been predicated on being provocative as a stand-up comedian like a Sarah Silverman or Patton Oswalt, it does contextualize that joke a lot better. Okay, and then than it and does. then and then Disney hires you for two Wreck It Ralph movies. So they know what her career was predicated on. Uh, they know what her brand was. They knew what James Gunn's brand was. But guess why what? act surprise? Who discovered these tweets? Why why act surprise? Either you back the people you hire or you vet them or you don't. Here's the thing. They you know why? 
They because they did vet Sarah Silverman and they considered her safe because she's a comedian and she got away with the jokes that she told. That's but they, the but reason they why. James, James Gunn, Gunn and made he a, apologized made a, for the tweet, so they knew James the same Gunn thing. James Gunn made Slither for fuck's sake. It was exactly and that, trauma. <laughs> and he apologized for the the, the tweets back then. So what we're li- so we're not talking actually, about tweets though. We're talking about his work. That that, you know, that, he, that they knew what he was. was. That brings me into a whole different point now, which is the fact that we react. And I'm not talking about just to this situation or whatever. We're reacting to media in a completely new way, which is kind of my take on this entire thing. And I think it goes across all spectrums. I think it goes across film criticism. I think it goes uh, in popular culture criticism. Mm -hmm. The knee-jerk reaction, the thing that is essentially what got James Gunn fired. And I – you know what? I'll say I almost even agree with, like, if I had to just place myself on some sort of pedestal, judge everything objectively based off of the fact of his career and the criticisms of the people who bro- who levied any sort of, you know, uh, brought these tweets against him, everything along those lines, I would likely agree with you and say that, you know what, in a fair world, James Gunn should still be, you know, employed by Disney. I, I, I will even give you that. Um, I don't think we live in that world. I think we've created a world that is terrible uh but by the way that we judge people by the way that we we uh knee jerk well not only knee jerk but our our now our consistent ability to be able to rehash anything anybody says in any sort of popular medium for the last 15 years is going to be immensely damaging to a lot of people for the foreseeable future and, and I'm not, and it's it's not no. even, here's the thing, and I'm not even talking about like a left-right thing, I'm not talking about a political thing. I mean this all across the board because I don't know if you guys watched the All-Star game last week. No. Nope. Uh, okay. So sports the, ball? So the MLB sure sports, sports ball. Not on that, my radar. That foosball baseball game. Uh, if you guys weren't aware, during the game... Oh, yeah, I, I knew it would do that because it's Brewers. I do know that. Right. Okay. Now we know how Trump won Wisconsin. <laughs> Um, it it was during the middle of the game. And his it, shit was real bad too, <laughs> and it was very disturbing. So, what happened for our, for our listeners? Yes, explain it. Okay, so essentially, a a, a pitcher, an all star pitcher for the Brewers, uh, went out to play, and while he was playing, it got unearthed that on when, the mound. <laughs> while he was on the mound, when he was seventeen and eighteen, he uh he tweeted very racist and sexist, homophobic, uh, homophobic yeah. remarks of uh, very, very terrible things. A lot of white power. Lots of white lot power, of, yeah. lots of, you know, or whatever. And um, and then after the game, you know, just said, I was a kid. I don't know what I was saying. I didn't really know how to use Twitter. I, and the, the big argument that came out of that was just like, well, how does a person change, you know, in seven years? Like, it, it, like do you really change that much? Do you, or whatever. And I, I'm assuming, you know what, here's the... Ask I'll, Marky Mark. From, from uh, high school to uh, to twenty to twenty seven, so, yeah. So, so I was like, shit ton so, of change so I was like, so I, was like I will give the the kid a little bit of credit of saying, you know what, when you're in a clubhouse that's you know probably seventy percent Dominican and black, yeah, you're gonna your opinions are gonna change a little bit. <laughs> you know what? I mean, especially when those players are usually better than you. Um, but but not I to go know. down not to go down the racist track. But anyways, it, I, I found it really <laughs> strange because they were, they showed people because this is the first year they allowed the players to have phones during the fucking All Star game. So during the All Star game, he's out there pitching. They're in the dugout, sitting there looking at these fucking they had, racist. They had to tweets. protect his family. They had his. Did you, did you read what happened with the family no, in the didn't jersey? Hear about that. So his family's in the stands, and this shit breaks in the middle of the game. So the, the family's like, "Fuck." So they turn their jerseys inside out because people are now like people in the stands are on their phones and they're reading this shit. Then the organization comes by and gives them blank jerseys to wear because they're in danger now at this point. Because this is this is and it's a really good point to bring up. Is it is the most real time anything mm. like this has ever happened? Maybe like if the James Gunn thing broke during like so, the Oscars or something. So, you know. So, so there are two levels to this, and, and and where I was really going with this whole thing is that. But uh, but but if you kneel during the national anthem, you'll never work again. But this guy gets a standing ovation in, in Milwaukee. Fuck that guy. He's n- never gonna get a standing ovation anywhere, dude. He did. There's a whole point that they, 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 they organized a standing ovation when he returned back for a home game. And it was it was all like apparently like white power people. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I did read about that. But I, all all I'm saying is that there are two sides of this thing. There's immediate culpability for anything that you ever put on the internet ever. 
And so sure. you're going to be held accountable for that on one side. <sighs> then... And as a celebrity, you should understand that is in... Like, my, my brother put it very simply. My brother works in news, in TV news. And he goes, I can't... I don't put, I don't <laughs> touch... As much as I can, I stay away from any of it because I know at any any moment that I'm compromised by something I say on social media, it's my job. So if so if well, I if I sell a screenplay and the, a Disney hires me, we're getting burning this podcast over. to the ground. <laughs> exactly. All of, if any of us exactly. are getting anywhere, this podcast is, it didn't exist. The sure. new way there was no new way. <laughs> there was no snap. Way. I don't know. Thanos did nothing wrong. Oh, that, that was the old way. We deleted it. <laughs> <laughs> but see, that, that's a, that's a good angle too, though. So then, the, then what? What? This guy was seventeen and eighteen. You didn't know what he was doing, right? Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not in the in the business of you know whatever I t tweet or whatever I say. But but then you do become famous. Then what? Th then what no, percentage no, no, of your so, old so that's, social media that, is should you be held accountable like for? I, said, I think you're always get, right now. We're living in a time where people who are coming of age and who are actually becoming famous are being held accountable for for what they say on social which, media, which I think is ultimately is, good. It ultimately is a good thing. But like I said, there's a catch. But like James for all Gunn sides. wasn't a superstar when he tweeted that stuff. When he became when he got Most more leverage, aren't. he Neither stopped was this doing picture. that. Yeah, this picture exactly. was in fucking was high, high school. school. He, um, but all I'm saying is. Once he started becoming more in the public eye, he he didn't tweet those things anymore. He didn't need to. Sure. So we're basically saying yeah, the yeah. same thing, is that you feel like James Gunn grew a little bit? Or maybe he grew because he got maybe. more famous because he did become that rock star that you said you really wanted to be. And then he got to be rock star status. was like, I don't have to be a pr pr uh, provocateur anymore. You know, right. Now I can actually tweet this other stuff. It doesn't mean that other stuff doesn't exist. It doesn't mean he didn't do it in the past. So anyways, I... But, I, but you know what else, though? What, the what, thing what, is, though, <laughs> I, when, 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 when I tweet through social media, sometimes I tweet something and then I'll go back a minute later and I'll delete it. And I'll go, yeah, well, but, you but, know what? That, I don't want that on the record. No, that tweet exists. You understand just because you deleted it, it yes. doesn't go away. Yes, but what I'm saying is, you know, there, there's that deliberation, and sure, he, but you tweeted it. Once you you did the same thing. If you tweet, if you put it out there, it's if you click that button, and you do that, it exists forever and can be found fairly easily by anyone that wants to. If if you become when I become famous, when you direct, you get tapped to direct. The every, next everyone's Guardians gonna find movie. my drunk tweets. Do I love you, man? <laughs> yeah, like I mean, I live tweeted that one time. And I pissed I, off ben, a lot ben, of people. Ben, I want you to get finish your your point here for, first. Well, actually, I, I was trying to curtail it into a kind of a different point, which okay. is more about the way that we react to media altogether nowadays, and okay. uh, because I think it kind of comes back to. A point that a, a very salient point that I feel like uh, that's happening now in the way that we even react to media, like the the way that we react to movies and TV shows and that type of thing. It, 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 and I think it's and actually, politics, which uh, is media. Well, that's what I mean. It's po it's yeah. politics too. But that's what I'm saying. They're all kind of synonymous now, which is where we take what we want to hear and we we distort it. We take the st the bad stuff that people say and we and we use it as vindication that they're a a, a sure. bad person. And then we completely ignore in a lot of cases. And I'm 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 not saying anybody in this room here. But what no, I'm saying is we, so, so, so right, I'm 100 percent so guilty of that. Right now, you have 300,000 people who have signed a petition to have James Gunn rehired. These are 300,000 people who are probably going to criticize somebody who sure. for saying something racist. You know, on on Twitter yesterday or something like that. Somebody who was on Fox News. I don't even fucking know. Like well, I said, I'm, well, yesterday makes a I'm difference projecting. too. If it was eleven years. It does make a difference when it was said, when it was tweeted. If it was it, it was it, tweeted it, yesterday. That's less you have left less of an excuse. And actually, the reason you have less to lean on the the, the thing that that I I actually brought up one thing for this podcast. I mean, I wanted to talk about the the topic a lot, but I I really was interested in the way that film. The way that we react to film criticism nowadays, and I feel like it's so it, – it, the way that we talk about movies or the way that people who are fans talk about movies and talk about TV is so similar to the way that we talk about politics now because it's become so polarized and it's become so like <laughs> DC and Marvel. you hate or you love – and there's and there's so little middle ground. I just want to read one thing. No, really no, quick. no, no. And I, I want to and I want to ask you a question about that right? sure. specifically. So, do you feel personally for you how you react to movies? How how has your reaction to movies changed over time? Because I know for sure mine has changed drastically, especially in the last several years. More like my political and social views I feel like I've just drifted more and more to the middle because I feel so ostracized from 
from either side. Like I'm just like I I, I hate both. Ben the libertarian now. I, I no, I hate libertarians. <laughs> I hate mother's libertarian. I hate fringes so you hate much. Them? You hate his mother. I hate fringes so much. Is mo- your mom was libertarian. What no, my brother. That? Oh, you hate Chris? No, he doesn't hate Chris. No, Chris. I, I, he doesn't I don't hate, hate libertarian. Everybody no. hates Chris. No, <laughs> okay. No, no. I, 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 I couldn't ever be a per, personally be a libertarian for lots of reasons. I could never go full lib. It, 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 I'm talking about fringe when we're talking about fringe politics. Sure. Fringe politics, to me, feel the same way as fringe movie going or, or, or fringe media, the, mm-hmm. the people who absorb media. Not fringe uh, the TV show. Not no, fringe the good TV, TV show. show. Good TV show. <laughs> J.J. Abrams. No, um, no and, and, for, and it's funny. But, I, same as my political views is, is that I, I'm, it's more centrist, but I found also that I'm more, because of pol- because I'm so angry at, at most of what I see in politics, often on both sides, uh, largely on the right side, but also on a lot of things on the yeah. left. When I watch movies and Evil TV versus now, inept. I am much more accepting. If something overall makes me happy, I'm going to say that was great. I mean, mm. there's, a, there's a lot more of no, where no, I'm just no, like, no. this to, thing to didn't... To protect your own sanity. This thing you, didn't, d- didn't depress me and make me upset. It's and almost things, a complacency with you. Yeah, yeah. I very, I very much that I... Any... any <laughs> grasp of happiness I can find I'm so happy that filmmaker That's brought so it to sad. me and no, I forgive I, a lot of other I, things I, I, I'm, I'm right Ooh, there I'm right there with man. you like I've I've become a lot more but uh, I'm happier about that I, honestly I'm not as critical of so just just to kind yeah. of call back hmm. like conversations that we interesting Matt. that we have had with Nick I remember at one point because we were very used to like Nick and I were were uh I mean, I mean, not literally, but but sort of from a film standpoint, raised in the same environment where we were, you know, trying to stick to our guns and and, and express our artistic vision really well. And we were supposed to, you know, battle for that vision. You know, we were yeah. supposed to sit there and we were supposed to argue about it and be like, this is the way that I think the way that I, I want to think. And then I'm 10 years removed from that. Nick has been in L.A., still in that world for 10 years. Nick comes back, and I've kind of drifted into this zone that you and I are in where it's just like, but it's okay, (laughs) you know, like, or whatever. And so even though we get really super passionate about a lot of things that we really like or anything that we passionately dislike, a lot of times we would start talking with Nick, and Nick was so adamant about a certain point or viewpoint or something that as it pertains to a movie or property – you would sit there and try to convince us that you were right, and and that it was it was the same for me. What disassociated, or, or not disassociated, but but what turned me off about those types of conversations was it was the same thing as about listening to politics. Is that it was just like all ben, I hear. I'm, I'm sorry to stop. You're wrong, Ben. I have to, I have to. <laughs> all I hear is somebody screaming in my ear and telling me why I'm wrong. Yeah. And instead of looking, kind of just sitting in the middle and just saying, well, if okay, just, if you just well, listen to, to my both sides, if you just listen to my well prepared <laughs> PowerPoint presentation about why well, you were wrong, maybe you would agree. Well, and, exactly. And, and I'm I just think, saying. I think part of it also is I feel as I'm getting older, and and as things are are there are worse things in the world, and there are bigger concerns. And a lot of it, part of it is that like it, it's also hard to have those debates in general because it's like. I found happiness in this, and and I think that's something I did not do before. In if some, a if some, place. no, if, so, yeah. if someone came to me and they're yeah. like, I think, um, I think the greatest, uh, I think the most amazing cinematic achievement was Avatar, and and to me, it, for for ten years ago, I go, you're a fucking moron. What is wrong with you? <laughs> My mother-in-law listens to this podcast. <laughs> Hoot, if, Hoot, if you're listening, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but I've also just softened on that to be like, fuck me. If something makes F- you no, happy, yeah, don't shit on yeah, that for fuck, somebody. Fuck me for being the one to say you shouldn't like that because I don't think it's good. That's an asshole. That's the yeah, definition exactly. of asshole. Yeah. And I'm much more willing to just be like, look, if you, you like what you like, I'd like to hear what you like or maybe what you don't like. And But don't – there shouldn't be no convincing it's on a, either it's, side. It's not disparaging. There, yeah, there shouldn't be, a, there shouldn't be a, a, a convincing of whether you liked something or not. You should just mm. feel what you feel about it. I, I completely agree. But I, So anyways, I feel like we've reached this kind of – you know, I disagree. A sea change, <laughs> yeah. A, a sea change of the way that people react, because right now I feel like, it, like I said, it's consistent across the board the way that people are reacting to politics and media. Um, and I think something's got to give at some point. I mean, there's going to have to be a, a nuke. <laughs> well, <there's, laughs> Jesus. 
Uh, cool, cooler oh, minds. Sweet salvation. <laughs> cooler minds will prevail at some point. I'm actually quite, you know, certain of that, and I have to be because I have a family and I have kids. And if I don't, if I'm not sure of that fact, then I'm gonna drive myself insane. Welcome um, to welcome to me and Matt's world. We have nothing, nothing holding us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nothing. We're nothing living in the lives. fucking mire. <laughs> the anyways, fucking mire. The one th- thing that that made me kind of laugh when I read it, and uh, it, but also. I thought was very introspective and very interesting was that because I consider this whole thing about like I brought right back to like Star Wars about all these people who were just tearing Ryan Johnson a new asshole for you know and ripping apart Solo too you know what Ryan Johnson (laughs) never made any pedophilia jokes on Twitter so we gotta give him that that we know of (laughs) Ryan if you're out there Get rid of your, get rid of your tweets. Stuff, yeah. Get a good scrubber. But the way that people, Mike Cernovich is coming after you. The people that we react to it, and then sometimes just react to this for the sake of reacting. And I feel like that that also happen, that happens on, on politics too. I mean, just people sure. the, the thing that react heard... for the sake of reacting. Like, I mean, nobody's you're not going to go on CNN and see today that the yeah. fact that oh yeah, finally the EU was just like oh guess what you know what we're going to uh, stop all the tariffs and we're just going <laughs> to actually agree to everything and the Dow went up 400 points at the end of the day and stuff like that. And guess what? You know what? That was a win for Donald Trump. I fucking hate the guy, but you know what? Yeah, he called their bluff. Yeah, and, and, and all those good things, all those crazy reactions from the liberals when they locked those children in cages. <laughs> it was just for the sake of a reaction. But but again, ice ice baby. But the, yeah, but <laughs> but abolish ice. No no look, <laughs> I, I think I think ben, ben you're you're definitely onto something. I think this is also maybe another another podcast to to get into it but i think there's definitely something to be said for the bubble which is becoming more and more apparent as far as the bubble you live in on social media and socially with your friends and how you are protected from a lot of things so we we had eight years of obama and because obama was good for us we didn't really dig too deep same as disney James Gunn was good for them for for six years here. They didn't really dig too deep until they had to dig too deep. And then someone said, hey, by the right. way, you're dealing with something really terrible. Take a look at the shit they did. Obama and they're like, was terrible? They're, well, Obama? I mean, I, well, I'm saying Obama because there were things the happening. There, there were things happening with the kids getting separated from their from their parents during that time, too. And there were some bad things happening as far as the border control went on that. Now, I don't know all Wait, about it. something bad happened during the <laughs> yeah, Obama administration? Exactly. And and that's the thing. is, uh, But I was I was blissfully unaware yes, of, until almo- now. of almost all of those things. And I, I, Maybe there I is said, a silver lining, though. From now I, on, I've, it won't be like that. I've said it before. I will say it again. I believe that Donald Trump is the Darth Vader of of our our generation for politics right now. I believe he is the one that brings balance to the force by by destruction. Luke Skywalker brought balance to the force. No, Darth no. Vader Darth brought Vader balance brought to the force. the force and by eventually usurping the the evil emperor. But anyway, I, Darth Vader is way too I, smart to, 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 to bring, I it, think to bring that, it around. This is why these conversations are happening. Now. These conversations weren't happening like this. I, before. Darth Vader also paid one hundred and thirty thousand dollars to silence the <laughs> Mandalorian playmate model. <laughs> so th- th- this is kind of a long mail, quote, mail model. but um. Uh, so, in the advance of the release of Mission Impossible Fallout, which I'm really yes. excited, uh, which really Want excited to see about so seeing, bad. Um, and it, it, I, I am a huge fan. I've always been a really big fan of Chris McQuarrie, especially as a writer, um, and the way that he has kind of entangled his own aesthetic, you know, with, within the, the the context of pop culture movies. But he had a really interesting thing about the way that we react to popular media. It was mostly based off of the fact that he defended Ryan Johnson, and and he um, works with Tom Cruise. <laughs> well, he, obviously, <laughs> so you have to reconcile something there. But sure. um, but he wrote something that I thought was really interesting, and I'll, I'll read it really quick. It says he said, "Look, movies are very emotional. They're extremely, extremely emotional. A movie like Star Wars, and movies like Marvel, where you're dealing with comic books." This stuff that's coming from their childhood, it's the same thing as campfire stories. In some cases, it's the very fabric of their growing up. It's something of which they're hugely protective. Going back to The Way of the Gun, what I did in The Way of the Gun is I defied the expectations of the viewer. I subverted them right from the very beginning of the film. And I learned a valuable lesson, which is that people tend to react quite extremely when you don't meet their expectations or when you don't tell them the story. What I did in The Way of the Gun was that asking you to figure it out instead of telling you what I want you to feel. Mass audiences, I'm not saying everybody, but mass audiences tend to reject that type of thing. It's very upsetting to them. They've come to be entertained and they find themselves doing the work and you confront the sort of thing at your peril. 
So I understand why they're angry as they are. I've been listening to their complaints about uh, that movie they're talking about. Uh, uh, of course, uh, the last, last Jedi. Last Jedi. Um, <laughs> I've actually engaged some of them directly and spoken to them, and it's kind of confirmed everything I felt, which mess, which is that mess, mess with their expectations. And when you do that, that's the reaction you're going to get, no matter what. At the same time, I feel like the reactions are pretty extreme. And what I noticed is that they're not able to separate wh- what was being, what they were being upset w- from their choice of how they were being. And, oh, so, excuse me. Uh, it's black text, so <laughs> it was the best of times. <laughs> it was the worst of times. How much longer is this quote? By the way, and what I noticed was I like they were that. not able to separate was being was their being upset from their choice of how they were expressing it. So you would confront them on the way that they were expressing it, and they would defend their right to express being upset. They really couldn't separate the two things. Okay. And I think that speaks to a bigger issue. I think that it speaks to what we're seeing on virtually any issue on the internet, all through all spectrums. People are so busy defending their point of view that they're not really looking at the way they're defending it. What we've done in society is we're attacking logical problems with emotional responses. And I 100% agree with them. I think that we... we it goes back to the knee-jerk reaction. We have emotional responses to logical problems. And so we, we it, that's what I feel like really applies to politics and especially applies to these things with like James Gunn or any of the other, other people that whose careers may be in jeopardy. Sure. Is that we have an, an innately emotional response, whether that's to defend them or whether that's to attack them, as opposed to sitting on that perch and looking down the middle and saying... Let's weigh these options because in the in the case of James Gunn, I feel like you do that. James Gunn probably still has a job with Disney. I feel like you do that with a lot of other people. Maybe you know you lend on to go on the more critical side of somebody, you know, based off of their history or what it is that their tendencies have been, whether it's on social media or anywhere else. So I, the only reason I wanted to read that is because I thought it's a pretty nice way of saying we need to take ourselves back from the situation a little bit. And and stop with the knee jerks shit so much. Yeah. Well, Nick, you and you brought yeah. up you brought up the point, that, and I think it's a really interesting point, especially from you know because Ben, you're coming to it from the PR standpoint, which I think is a, is a strong way to, to look at yeah. it as far as what yeah. is the PR, how does a PR department act? These are the that, steps that, that PR that is the way I'm looking they, at. But, but they can't well, pretend that they didn't know what. Well, was no, there. but hold on. But so I think where you were right, or where, where you have an interesting take on this, is that. Um, a, what did they know and when did they know it? Which is is part of that's where your PR spin happens, right? They knew all of it. But but more interesting is what are the ramifications for having this kind of reaction? And if the idea is that, okay, well, this is what happens. This person was found out for doing this and therefore we sever the ties for them. What cash cows are they willing to give up when that happens to somebody? Now, now they've set their precedent. And their precedent is to, to fire first, ask questions later. Now, if they bring James Gunn back... Maybe they have a chance, but I feel from a PR standpoint, and I work in re- reputation management as well. I think it's a terrible PR move, you can't go actually, back. for them because it gives them very little room to maneuver going forward with any hundreds of possible things that could happen. Disney and Pixar are working with a lot of fucking celebrities, and any one of first of all, I mean, Tim Allen. It has it was a coke <laughs> was arrested for trafficking cocaine. Yeah. Do we not make another Toy Story? No. Look, what, what's what, the statute what, of limitations what on those do, things? Disney needs to hire Richard Spencer. Mm-hmm. Tom to, Hanks has been arrested four times for you rape. Should leave I mean, Tom out of this. He is the only <laughs> true and good thing in this world. He's a goddamn saint. I was about to say. Ben just like, made a rape joke. Everyone, <laughs> let the record show. Uh, let the record show. But you like, called uh, Tom Hanks a rapist. I, I was I was actually about to say though. Just imagine though if something like really negative that something came out about. Steven Spielberg, something he said in 1981, yeah. that was super, you know, it's super indefensible, and and then you you think how do you leverage that now yeah. in this situation? You, so you, so, you, so, you so can you, you qualify that because he's Steven Spielberg? No, you this no, 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 not the name. You back off of a working relationship that you you know the person. Okay, Disney knows James Gunn. They they know what they knew when they hired him about all this stuff. He was vetted. That, like, no one's gonna no one's gonna make a big deal about it. And if they do, we'll we'll deal with it then. Well, guess what? That's what happened. They dealt with it when it happened. They knew what they were getting into. The the the, the response to me, honestly, when when like you said, Matt, it, it's it, it's clearly a joke as bad and as and as as terrible and abhorrent as as they were. 
it, they're clearly jokes. They're not coming from a, a a serious place in any by any stretch of the imagination. So there where do you draw the line? There, there are people who would listen, dis- and I, I know that, and there are people who would disagree with you just sure. because they don't understand because the they because they're idiots and they and they well, don't and know. And, any and, and, and Roseanne will hide behind that because Roseanne made a similar. Because Roseanne's thing was a real. Actual attack on a human being in a negative as and racist, racist as you can possibly get <clears throat> thing, but the pro- but I get Disney, I get Disney's knee jerk because of Ro- Roseanne was a, if Ros- I don't think oh, listen, if but, Roseanne but had happened that James Gunn would have been fired. Now now we're sitting at at, at, at in a world uh, a Guardians universe without <clears throat> James Gunn in a world that doesn't have a million dollar donation to Children Protective Services that th- they could have just gotten in, in that front order. Of, they could have just said hey, James <laughs> is going to donate this money. Disney is going to match that. We 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 are we are we are shocked, but we've but what we we've gotten to know James during this process, and we know that even eleven years ago he wasn't tweeting these things from a place of, of fact or opinion. He's a provocateur. He's grown as an artist. He's grown as a person. That's the story of Guardians, and we, we, we're we're sticking by James. You, 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 and that's your choice. And look, if you don't want to do that, that's your like I said. That's Disney's prerogative. That you, that's your one route, and the other route is to fire him right away. And they, they chose one. And all I hope for, honestly, guys, truly, it really it does come back to that first tweet, Ben. While I've, I've kind of, at first I was more on the, J- Disney was totally justified. They, their hands were tied. They had no other choice. That was my first reaction, right? The more I thought about it, the more I think it would be nice for someone... <laughs> It would be nice for Disney to stand up for someone who brought them an incredible franchise who's grown as a person. To establish a gray area. And the problem is gray well, area goes both ways. But wait, but, but, but what I'm saying is all I can hope for is that, you know, look, if you're going to hold James Gunn accountable, fine. Hold everyone accountable. You know, hold our politicians accountable. Hold everyone who has an unsavory tweet accountable. It's, it's got to all be the same. You can't pick and choose. You can't have alt writers determine the fate of, of, of people's careers and it, that's a real slippery slope because what they're going to do is they're going to systematically knock down people who are voices that oppose their views and they're going to you know, just th- think of and the hypocrisy think of the hypocrisy of a guy <clears throat> who talks that rape doesn't exist getting James Gunn fired for clearly let's see when you look at his tweets they were clearly coming from this like disillusioned uh, warped, fucking um, misogynistic worldview, as opposed to a provocateur well, who's making jokes. The, the difference is that guy's tweets are in line with his his hiring company's his policies. No, with his and that and that's an interesting to think thing to think about. Disney, as Disney statement says, it is not in line with our views and 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 policies. Well, that, that, that yeah, guy's no shit, shit. That guy's shit is. That's the shit that those people believe. They that is their their baseline. Nice, which is sort nice of going terrifying right. and, and scary. But yeah, no kidding, no kidding. But Here, and so so, yeah, I mean, so I, to I, end, I think where do you go now if, if you're Disney? I, I say you call up Nicole Perlman, who did the, who co-wrote and, and largely does not get enough credit for co-writing the first screenplay to Guardians to take over that third and bring back some of that first movie magic I, that, that's what I think you do I mean they've talked about Taika I mean my brother and I watched Infinity War again while we are in Arizona and I'm like yeah Russo Brothers could also probably handle some of that but stuff but I, 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 think, I think Nicole sure true, if, if you look at it Gunn almost got almost too cre- too much credit for the screenplay of the first sure. she had a big big part and like largely that. no one knows who she is bring her or- back and, 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 and I think you have a chance or you could just be really stupid and just uh you know, hire Sean Gunn. <laughs> Just have Sean Gunn direct the next movie. Has he done it? Can, can we make it Sean Gunn directed it? And it's just like, it's just <laughs> James Gunn's like, <laughs> I hope, uh, yeah, I think you should do this. <laughs> I think, I hope James Gunn just goes, look, Disney, here's my completed Guardians 3 he, script, he already, script. It, already, it was know? already turned in. And my hope is that the script is turned in and it's Written in good enough Written by condition. Alan Smithy. <laughs> good enough. No, yeah. and, and, and when we talk about reactions to this, I like all three of our reactions because ben, ben Ben came out and said, you know, you can't can't attack the other side. And uh, and you basically, you basically was like, I don't feel bad for him. And I was like, I don't feel bad for him. I feel bad for, for me. me. Yeah. It fucking sucks for me. It sucks that these people don't know how to not fucking... Like it, 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 that drives me nuts, and I and that uh, 
I don't think it's even necessarily the content or any of it. I'm mostly mad that people can't just stop fucking tweeting constantly for effect and have it out there. If this was done in any other medium, and I think that's what we've established in in our rules. By the way, I've named this podcast Where's the Line? Because I really want to know what the line is. And the line is literally that. If it is in your art... If it is done in, in character, and we and we consider stand-ups to be characters... Maybe you're all right. Then then it's okay. Maybe. It is... Mm, Maybe. I haven't seen any instances where that's... I, I didn't see when when Eddie Murphy said faggot like 30 times in Raw, that that helped, didn't get him in Mulan and Shrek, and become beloved... Ch- and Dr. Doolittle in all these movies... Didn't hurt him any at yeah. there, and there's some real ugly shit in in the, and I love his early stand up, but there's some ugly shit in there, and he said it the same as anyone else. That's that was what humor was. That that's what it was is pushing those boundaries and pushing that shit. But it still it doesn't excuse it. It's still homophobic garbage. Yeah, um, it's not funny. And it's and that's the worst part of all of us. I think is it's never the funniest shit that anyone's getting in touch. Like it's never yeah. the bit where I'm like, well, but that sh- bit sh- was so good about Sean, raping the kids. Like Sean I thought Gunn, that was a great bit. Sean Gunn tweeted, you know, <laughs> James James's bluer material was never his my best favorite <laughs> or, or mom's. <laughs> Yeah, Sean Gunn's response, uh, by the way, I I will urge you all to read. It is a very nicely and well-written little piece. So maybe he does have some of his brothers writing and uh, directing talent. So maybe maybe we'll see a Sean Gunn cinematic universe. I I just, I just, you know, as a liberal, you want to not make this about politics, but it's impossible to when you see that it was Cernovich who did this. It's impossible to, like, separate that when you're looking at a president who's who's taking it out... (laughs) Whole whole uh, context of the Putin um, meeting, taking out on the official White House transcript of that meeting, taking out whole sections. It's it's Orwellian. He 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 lies every day on Twitter. He will will yell at the leaders of Iran What's and caps lock. That's, that's okay. Thing. That's his thing. That's it's, okay. Yeah. That's okay. That's okay. It's okay for him to, to be caught on tape, you know, pay, making plans. He's a shell company to pay off a, a Playboy model. Uh, while he was married in his third marriage, after his, that's okay. But 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 if but if you make make a, a a tasteless, horrible tweet eleven years ago in an effort to be the provocateur that you want to be, uh, there, th- that that's that's unforgivable. There, look, there's the fact is there's no fairness, and we're well, not gonna, we're not going to beat that. Disney, Walt Disney's hired you know all domestic abusers. They've they've hired well, raunchy comedians. That's, that, that's almost yeah, been like yeah, you're you're, you're, you're barking out you're barking up a completely different tree there. But, because obviously, I mean, Trump has tree? well, and it's three hundred ninety <laughs> people who are you know trying to look out for his well, public image and they're trying to spin everything and everything. Well, I think fucking also what, what was funny to me is, I, so I didn't know when I, when you sent me the story, it didn't say anything about how the, the tweets were found or released. So, you know, what my first reaction was, I assumed it was the assholes that were upset about his bit making, getting angry with the fans about solo and about, uh, and oh, about right. last, I, I literally, my first thought was, Oh fuck. He fucked with the wrong fans, and these kids are yeah. so. And I mean, it, that's not far off, by the way. At, you're looking at me like I'm crazy. No, it's but that's not at it's all. It's not far you off. You mean you're telling me that a bunch of geeks don't have the time to go filter through someone's tweets to find shit to make his life harder because and they, they haven't done because that in they the past because they have Star Wars. Fans? Have you heard of incels? Yes, <laughs> yes, one hundred percent. Yes, one hundred percent. And I never, I never once thought it was the the political thing, just because he's been anti political so long. But this followed directly after, and I'm still not. I mean, I could go conspiracy if you want and say that that maybe there someone's ear was whispered into by one of those guys. But it, I, it's interesting to me. It's very interesting to me to see that that was my initial reaction. It was not at all political. I'd never assumed that that was the <laughs> and ultimately, issue. Ultimately, you know what? I, it actually comes back to to me is that what I was going to tell you earlier is the fact that Mark Duplass like caved so fast. And yeah. Was like, like I understand about being like there was a completely different way you could have approached that. Just being like, I know that Ben Shapiro has said racist and misogynist sure. and sexist stuff in the past, and I don't agree with that. What I mean is that currently he seems like he he's listening to both sides and potentially like whatever there was a way to phrase what he did as opposed to just completely backtracking <laughs> and caving to everybody who was just like well that makes no, you no, a no, fucking but he, racist his, no, but his, his, his response but 
Well, I like. Well, no, his I mean, response was his response was, pathet- was it was pathetic. Is what it was. Uh, see, I, his response I thought was basically like I like, dude, I didn't think out my tweet. I didn't think out my thought before I shared it out there. And he didn't it, think and I, Sean I, and I saying it up. you should listen to Ben, ben Shapiro. No, because you just said there was a better way to go about it. He just shot it out there as a thing, and then no, there's people that are not ready for that. If I, no, if, uh, if I, I had, Ben, if I had send you a thing that says like you should really read this article by David Duke, it's really enlightening. Your initial first thought, off, you're, com- you're, com- you're 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 also right right there combining David Duke and Ben Shapiro, who although- Ben Shapiro said some despicably. David Duke was a grandmaster of the Ku Klux Klan. You sure. cannot, you cannot like socially compare the two of them. I'm sorry. Like, like I said, you, what you're doing right now is you're being reactionary. One celebrates one, and one's killing people. I guess or uh, hanging them. I don't know. Uh, like I said, you're, you're a it's... grand wizard, David. <laughs> that's reactionary, right there. Is what I'm sure, saying. Sure, but... and that's the reactionary stuff that we want to get away from. And and the fact that it was react because it was reactionary, a bunch of. Like I said, people who are threatening Mark Duplass because no, and no one should be threatened. I don't, I don't believe in that, but I do believe that he, he's a, look his, he goes out there and says you should, you should be listening to this person. People are are have the right to say, hey, you should also listen to this person for these other things that they've said. Maybe you don't know about them because Mark's right. whole thing was basically like, I like the guy was real nice to me. He was real nice to me, and he was a straight shooter, and he was nice to me. And like, Tommy Larent, and he's real a nice great to look at. follow on Twitter. Yeah, like and like and I don't know sh- I don't know shit about Ben Shapiro before. I didn't honestly didn't know anything about him until I read the, the he, these articles. Well, honestly, about here, him. here's the thing about uh, he has said, said terrible things in the past. Ben Ben Shapiro is a conservative commentator that occasionally will agree <laughs> with liberals against all other all other right wing. Like he will just say, you know what, these guys were right. About this, but he's—I mean, he's Sounds actively like real still. Mensch. He's actively still saying terrible. I mean, it's not like oh, no, he's no, used no. to say he's these still, things. He's in the just past. terrible things. Yeah. I'm just saying. Have you guys? I get it. Have you guys heard of this Tommy Laren? She has some real good hot takes. <laughs> Do you fun. think I'm defending the fucking dude? <laughs> no, I'm not defending the guy. No, I just—I waited for a moment to find that popcorn I'm thing. I'm defending Mark Duplass of saying, you know, like, <laughs> hey, the, you know, it's not a bad guy again, to follow again, on Twitter. Again, who do I feel bad for? Me, because I really like Mark, and I don't, I don't, I don't want to not like Mark. Mark Duplass is not going to lose any work for anything. Thing. No, I just don't want to not like Mark Duplass. I want to be a champion of Mark Duplass. I actually I... like Mark Duplass even a little bit more because at least he was <laughs> willing to say, hey, you know what? There's a guy on the other side of the aisle that I actually, you know, I agree when he tweets this, no. this, and this. You know what? I don't even, I don't agree with, I'm not going to follow Ben Shapiro. No. I think Ben Shapiro is a dick. But the fact that he was even willing to say that and the fact that people on the other side just attacked him for it. I feel like, like I said, it's it was, reactionary it was, it politics. Was a, it was a, it was a bad candidate to do it for. I think there, it, are, it, there are, I think there are other bad. people that you could <laughs> yeah. do that. It was that, bad. That Name should... one conservative that's a better option. <laughs> no, no, no. Go, John McCain. <laughs> okay, right. Jeff Flake. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Um, no, no. I mean, look. I no, By the way, I'd, I'd love to hear more from from. Stop throwing popcorn in my office. I'm getting upset. I mean, the studio. Last Pie Productions. Point in Beach. I think anyway. this popcorn went stale. All right, I, I think this conversation has gone stale as well. What? So. <laughs> yeah, I think we. I think I think we've. I think we've said it all. I think. Uh, I yeah, think but the question is really: where are the lines? Where are the standards? It, it all depends on, on what your position is. Not only the, the your standard career in life. Like we've, what does said, it we've said, the standard tends to be art, and there's definitely a statute They're of limitation. Art. They're attacking art, and there, there's a there's They're essentially a statute of limitations on on time, and and I think that's. I think within a decade is not old enough to. And by the way, to to make to draw that decade comparison, Trump's bullshit with grabber grabber by the pussy is a decade old, just as old as James Gunn's shit was. So if we're going to hold him accountable for saying he likes to you know grab women by the pussy, and it was clearly a joke. Yeah, it, it was they, maybe maybe it was maybe he just yeah clearly it was. Why a joke. would he say anything? That's not on brand at all. I'm, that that's not I'm that's ju- not substantiated look, by plenty. Of I'm evidence. just saying that's that is that's the reality it's we live different. in. That both of those things were were ten years apart. One of them was not broadcast. One of them was not thinking they were on camera either, right? Or being recorded. So yeah, I, there are many differences. A bad know, analogy. You Matt. know, I don't like. To, no, no, I'm saying that Trump's thing is even more defensible because it wasn't like a public statement that he made. He was in a bus with a human being having a candid conversation. Either way, I'm not a Trump. I'm not a Trump defender, but I I recognize where the lines exist on both sides and why they exist. And there are no lines anymore. Sucks. That's the point. There are on the, on this side. It's a, it's different. It's different for everyone and it, everything is chaos. There are lines on the right side. 
The and I mean the right as on in the, the left correct, side on the correct left side. <laughs> <laughs> There are. I think there. I think there are. I think that. I think the left likes to hold themselves to, the, it's the Franken thing. Hold themselves to a higher standard and say we're not going to allow when they go low. This shit. Hey, and, listen. Just because I agree with somebody ideologically doesn't mean I'm going to support guerrilla tactics when it comes to to sure. to uh, to the way that people report on on stuff. And Do you that's, support that's Magilla guerrilla tactics? Okay. Well, everybody uh, wants a bean. <laughs> roll that, anyway, roll that beautiful bean footage. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed uh, this week's episode. We will be back like, hopefully uh, uh, soon with uh, brand new episodes. Oh, in fact, uh, actually, maybe I should tease something amazing that's coming up. Mm. That's right. Ooh. We have a quiz show coming up. So every time Nick answers, we can hear. Mm. Oh, that's my, right. That's not, that's and every not. time Ben answers, we can hear. I love it. <laughs> and we have a good time. No, we have. We are going to be joined by none other than world famous Wilma McAwesome of the Brass Tap oh. Boynton Beach Trivia Night, as well as Trivia Night down at. Uh, Oh, what's the Irish pub? Is it the Irishman? No, the the one in Meisner. Uh, uh, Dubliner. Dubliner on Tuesday Dubliner. nights. Um, Wilma has graciously agreed to come into our, our tiny little studio and host a movie trivia, a three-round movie trivia to find out which one of us <laughs> is the best. Not me. And uh, I think it's, uh, it's going to be me. Are there prizes? Ooh. Sure. <laughs> sure. There will be um, whatever whatever pops if ben, I, if ben I would, doesn't oh, knock over. Whatever, Nebula, I don't, whatever, whatever, I don't, whatever I don't knock over. <laughs> if, if if I win, will you get Disney to rehire James Gunn? <laughs> it's not a make a wish. <laughs> oh, no, we, we're gonna have a, it's going to be, I, I hope to be, a fantastic episode. Wilma's got a, a history in radio and, uh, and broadcasting. Super fun dude. Um, uh, so and charisma despair, tons of it. So we will be meeting uh, next Wednesday to record, and we'll big get it dick out to energy, you. As, if you will. <laughs> as, yeah, Wilma does have big dick energy. In fact, we're going to bring that up on air. I think he's going to like that a lot. Look under Miriam Webster. <laughs> BD, it's a picture of Wilma McAllister. Wilma awesome. fucking awesome. <laughs> so we, we have Wilma here. We are. We can't. We can't describe how excited we are. Um, and we thank you so much for listening once again. And we will talk to you next time. Cheers. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was coming.